Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo and today we are here for another of those long videos where I talk about the pens that I have inked for the month. So this video is pens for November 2020. And I have a few less than last month. Last month there was 20 or there were 25 pens and this month it's 23. So I will, this will be long, uh, this will be a long video. I'll try to put timestamps for each pen if you want to see that particular pen. Also, that in the description uh, section, of course. And I will also put uh, a link for where you can purchase the pen if available and also a link for the review that I made if I made it already. So that's enough of this usual introduction. Let's take a look at the pens. So the first pen I have with ink is this one. This has been with ink for quite some time now. And this is, let's write, this is a Jinhao Centennial that skip was me because this one has a food and eve and I'm trying not to put a very uh, thick line on the paper so I have to hold it in a strange angle and this is the red because if I put it all the way down on paper it gets like this the red koi finish and it is impossible to read let's do it the other side and this is a fude nib and this way you can write with it like an extra fine and it has an ink mix inside so this is the kind of pen that you can take, can get a lot of line variation depending on the angle you use the pen at. Quite wet and it is a copy of the Parker Centennial Lufold. It has this interesting nib, an interesting material and because it has such a large nib I use it for some of the notes that I make in the videos, I have them posted uh, in front of me, so I make some big letters with these, and this is also something that I use to put the, the remainings of inks that are inside the cartridge or converters of other inks that I, of other pens that I decide to stop using. So I will use that ink I will not throw ink away, I will put ink inside that because that pen goes through ink very quickly so it also ha it always has an ink mix inside. Oops! This one is one of my favorite pens as I told you before and this is the Parker 45 with the typical Parker Aeroclip and with this nice fine steel nib. By the way, the nib on the on Xinhao is also a steel nib. So this is the Parker 45 Flighter and with a fine nib and the ink it has inside is the Pelican Edelstein smoky quartz. One thing that I find about the combo of this ink and pen is that this is not the best ink for this pen. Um, I don't know, the flow is strange, so it doesn't perform as well as it should, but here it is when it is empty and I'm not sure Okay, not much ink is remaining. I think I will put some Parker Quink Brown that is also this kind of dark brown and I know that ink behaves better with the Parker 45. Then we go to a pen with 
still with a gold nib. This is a Parker 51. This one is the one that was from my grandfather. A very small hooded nib. Oops, ink on the end. And this very nice shape. Aerometric filling. Which is different from the previous pens that I showed that are cartridge. So this is the Parker 51 costume black or black costume and this one is also skipping a little bit so but I think it's how this pen writes uh, or maybe these vintage Parker Quink black which is the ink inside is becoming to uh, some SM evaporation and it's becoming too thick. I'm not really sure, but I think all the Parker 51s write in this thicker way. But you can see quite a good line and I think it's still wet, so quite nice. And the nib on this one, I would say it is a fine or a medium nib, not sure. Now, the next pen is a pocket pen. This is a pocket pen that I find quite interesting, mostly because it is made of copper, and I love copper pens. And this is a Sean design that has a very pleasant uncapping, and you need to post it to write with it because it's quite short. This way it becomes long enough. It has a big number six Yovo nib, a fine nib made of steel. So, this is a Sean design pocket 6 in copper and with a fine nib and the ink it has is the Sailor Gentle Okuyama, and I think this ink goes quite well with copper pens. I think it's a nice color, and this pen performs really well. It's nice. One thing I would change is that I would have a branded nib, I think it would be nicer than this, but it's nice to have a pocket pen that, that has a number 6 nib. They advertise this a lot, saying this is the, the pocket pen with the number 6 nib, but there is another, and I'll show it in a moment. Now, let's go to one of my favorite modern pens, and this is, I showed you this pen several times, this was kind of a grill pen to me, and this is Leonardo, Officina Italiana, Momento Zero Grande, in sand. This one is the Pistone, which means it has a real piston filler, and this is a real um, piston knob, not just a blind cap. And it has the Leonardo Italy F nib. This is a steel nib, but with an ebonite feed, and it is a piston filler, as I told you. So, this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Sand Fine Nib with Diamine Macassar and this is a wonderful dark brown ink and the color on this pen is also amazing. Now, let's go to something a little different because it is a pen made of wood and this is a German pen. This is the Graf von Faber Castell classic, beautiful pen with this fluted design on the wood and shiny section and the nib with the logo, fine nib, 18 karat gold. 
I th no, this is the second gold nib, the first was the Parker 51. So this is the Graf von Faber Castell Classic Ebony. Yes, this is Ebony Wood with a fine nib and it has the Graf von Faber Castell hazelnut brown which is quite nice a quite nice color for this time of the year because we are in the autumn and here in the streets of Lisbon there are people selling roasted chestnuts which is something that we in Portugal really really like although this year we don't really know if you should walk too much on the streets eating chestnuts and so on uh, although this is hazelnut not chestnut but close enough I was just mixing the, the nuts together now so now let's go to another one this is the Graf von Faber Castell Intuition the Terra version which is a beautiful beautiful pen also another pen that I wanted to have for a long time with a similar nib to that one also a gold nib as you may see 18 karat gold nib the, the design is a little different but it is overall the same nib with a beautiful cap this pen is beautiful with no section it, it's fun so this is the Graf von Faber Castell Intuition Terra from Terracotta with a fine nib and the ink is Graf von Faber Castell Violet Blue and these nibs are quite good, quite wet. I, I really enjoy them. I think these are this is a very nice set of fountain pens. Let me just move a little bit this light that I have here on my right. And now, we will stay in Germany. I think we have lots of German pens today. And Italian. And Japanese. Okay. German pen. You know these. I showed this pen lots of times. And this is the Caveco Lilliput in copper with a bronze clip. Very nice pen. Cartridge converter with a steel number 5 nib. So this is the Caveco Lilliput copper with a fine nib. Almost all these pens have fine nibs and it has inside a, an ink mix yet I don't really know what it is made of and it has quite a good nib it writes really well but it's not very wet also this kind of ink mix is not very wet this is a small pen indeed now we go for another Caveco and I've showed you this pen a number of times this is very used although this worn finish comes with the pen because this is the Caveco AL Sport stone washed which is this kind of finish blue and it has with a fine nib let's turn the plus with into a fine plus Parker Quink black and you see quite a wet ink I think you can still see the brightness of the wet ink this is Rhodia paper and we jump from this that Caveco to this quite new edition the Paladin Evergreen which is a green AL sport that is exclusive for the Benelux which means Belgium Netherlands and Luxembourg so it is the Caveco AL Sport 
paladin evergreen with a fine nib and you can see a real difference between the fine nib on this pen and the previous one and it has inside the caveco palm green and this pen is much uh, thinner the line than the line of the previous pen and this is something that you'll see there are lots of difference most of these pens have fine nibs and you can see lots of the line variation now this is another caveco a caveco perkeo this came into rotation i think it was only this uh, during october so i didn't show it in the month of october video because it's starting now the first month and this is the Caveco Perkeo and the color of this one is light spring also with a fine nib all these pens, all these Caveco nibs write really well and it has the Caveco Summer Purple and quite good it is a very inexpensive pen steel nib cartridge pen it takes a full-sized cartridge or a full-sized converter it's a school pen light and I think quite good and we'll go to the last Caveco and this is a Caveco Supra which is kind of a very a much wider Caveco Lilliput this one is made of steel and it has an extra section that you put here to uh, increase the length of the pen but I won't use it like that I prefer to use it small so this is the Caveco Supra still this nib is real good with a fine nib and the ink is the diamine or diamine what's the name uh, the name of this no it's not sorry it is Pelican Evelstein Aquamarine and you can see with this pen you can have a little line variation because the nib is bigger and I think it's softer because of that it is a still fine nib again but this one is a number six so this is the other pocket pen that also takes number six nib not only the Sean design and we will keep ourselves in Germany although we still have two more German pens to show and this one is a Pelican I think this comes from the last month I already showed it on the video this one has a, an interesting feature is that it has the Pelican logo here on the front of the cap on top of the clip so this is the Pelican Sigma P520 with a medium nib and the ink is Pelican 4001 Brilliant Red and this nib is really good it writes really well when i do this smear test i'm doing just for you to check the wetness of the pen however because i'm smearing this with all those colors my finger is getting dirty and so it's smeared with a different color but it's a real red don't worry about that it's just the finger that has remainings of the other inks that i showed before and now from Germany we jump to the other side of the world to Japan and this is the beautiful Pilot Elite this is one of the most amazing pens I have with an amazing nib that is very big it is hard to show how big this nib is and so this is the Pilot Elite 
This one has, uh, let's call it sterling silver. It has this sizzle finish. It is the one that has the filling system that is no longer made those kind of rubber sacks, like an accordion sack. It's running out of ink. And I had to make a special cartridge to fit in. It has a wonderful manifold nib and the ink is the Pilot Hiroshizuku Tsu Tsuki and this is so wet, this is a very good pen and the nib is really big, it's very hard to show but I have here another big pen and now we go back to Europe, to the United Kingdom and this is a Titan from William Shakur. This one has a number 8 nib, so very big nib and when you compare this nib with the Pilot Elite you can see the size of this nib, it's really big. It doesn't look like that because it is an inlaid nib, but it's really big. So this is a big pen, big yellow piston filler pen with six ink windows and I guess it's running out of ink, finally. But I will ink it up again, I guess. And this is the William Shakur Titan Yellow, which is a 3D printed pen and I will review it soon. It has a fine uh, titanium nib which is quite flex and it has a pelican Edelstein smoky quartz. This is one of the inks that I repeat in today's video very beautiful dark ink that works much better with this pen than with the the one that I showed you before which was the Parker 45. This nib is quite flex and you can see there is some line variation but I will show a full review soon. And the next pen is now from Italy and this is my faithful Netuno 1911 beautiful pen with all these decorations the trident from the Netuno and the waves from the, the sea and the numbered edition there I, I really really like this pen it has been inked since I got it and it's really amazing so this is the Netuno 1911 black sands it is the name of the color and it has a fine nib and you can see the width of this fine nib compared with the nibs of with the widths of other fine nibs lots of inconsistencies but that's how life is and the ink it has is waterman violet this pen has a wonderful ink flow it writes very well maybe it's not that good for cheap absorbent papers because it will feather a little because of the ink flow but it's amazing this pen is amazing it has a vintage feel to it and it is really really good pen I would say this is also one of my favorite pens ever and when I'm thinking about Italian pens I have to say these are two of my favorites and there is another one at least which is the uh, Aurora 88, the vintage one. <laughs> and not that, no, not only that, now I, I'm looking a little bit forward and I also have a Tivaldi pen that it, it is really amazing. But let's move on and I have here now this pen. The amazing Bennu. If you didn't know which pen it was, you just need to look at the glitter and it, you'll, find, you'll find out. I think Benu is the only pen that makes these kind of finishes. Number 6 nib, but it is a Schmidt nib. That is something that I would like they made uh, proprietary nibs. It would be more 
they're branded with their own brand. So this is the Bennu Euphoria and the color of this one is caviar. It has a medium nib, which is a wonderful one, and it is finer than the, the fine nib on the on the Netuno, which is interesting. And the ink it has is the diamine inkvent calendar and the color of that ink is the solstice which is a beautiful I don't know how to really describe this color you can see my review of this of this of this ink but it is a, a beautiful color with some glitter and I think it makes sense because this is a glitter pen and now we go to that Italian pen that I was talking about which is this Tivaldi Perfecta Rich Black and I will say it again it's rich black because this black is really really intense it is a, one of the blackest blacks I ever saw it is inspired of a, in a vintage design of a, of a vintage pen from Tivaldi which was a safety pen this is not a safety pen but design is the same it has a number 6 Tibaldi nib, a fine nib, but it has an ebonite feed. And ebonite feeds make all the difference in pens. And so, this is the Tibaldi, also a fine nib. Now compare this fine nib with Netuno. But the writing experience is very good also. This one is very springy, this one is very hard, so... We have lots of different characteristics and I would say it's like the character of each pen and I like that. I don't like all the pens to match my characters, but I, my own character, but I like to have pens with their own characters and I have to deal with them. I don't know if this makes sense, but to me, I think it does. So this is the Tibaldi Perfecta in rich black. It is also available in some other colors. It is a beautiful, beautiful pen, beautiful writer with a fine nib and with one of my favorite inks ever, a limited edition from Mont Blanc, which is Mont Blanc, Daniel Defoe. This is not available anymore, but you will have similar inks with Diamine, uh, Wagner or even the Rohrer and Cleaner Alt Gold Gone. And we jump from Italy to Rotring, so Germany. This pen has a quite interesting shape, a color that I don't really know if it is blue or purple, but I think it's blue. And the nib that says rotting there and fine also and it has like this spear shape so this is the rotting initial it is one of the smoothest pens i have very very good my mother gave me this pen once i don't know for christmas or on my birthday, I think it was on my birthday, and I really enjoy this pen. I have it for a long time. Rotting Neil Show, let's call it blue, with a fine nib, very hard nib, don't expect flex, but the pen performs very well. It was advertised as a pen with a special uh, channel system on the feed for the air to, to exchange and to equalize pressure and to be good to be used in planes. I never had any problem when I use this during the flight and I use the pen during the actual flight without no burpings or anything and the color it has is the Mont Blanc also a beautiful color that is not available anymore I tend to go to special editions Mont Blanc Twilight Blue actually I don't do that much more anymore because Mont Blanc inks are very expensive and I decided that sometimes if I save the price of two bottles of Mont Blanc because now I have a lot of ink uh, already if I save the price of two Mont Blanc bottles maybe I can buy a nice pen so 
maybe it doesn't make that much sense to spend but i usually i used to spend a lot of money in moonblown special editions what was which was kind of crazy because i bought one bottle i used it i fell in love and when i got there to buy more it has been discontinued so i have some inks that i've been using very carefully because when they are over they are over i just can go around and check for some ink that is similar now we'll go for the more exp or the most expensive pen on this collection that i'm showing you today it's this pen yes it is a big pen no not as big as the william shakur because this is massive but this is the sailor king of pen the profit shape uh, this is a special collaboration with one shirt so it, it has a different cap ring beautiful pen with gold trim and a translucent green color it's hard to show you the translucency but believe me it is translucent green so this is the sailor an amazing pen with a big number eight nib also beautiful 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 so i'm very proud and happy to be able to afford such a pen i bought it in a very big discount so i could afford it otherwise i could not so this is the seller king of pen the profit shape um, and the color is dark green champagne with a medium nib quite wet the, the nib is springy and it has the also the Mont Blanc Daniel the foe the same ink as the Tivaldi Perfecta and you can see the Tivaldi Perfecta seems much darker it is also uh, dry it has dried down but in this pen you can have really line variation as you can see very very good pen i will have a review of this one someday and i my the thing that i have to point out that's not so good i think this pen has two properties that are not that good one is the price of course and the other one is something that i usually don't complain is the size of the converted converter is really small for such a big pen but I think I will need to go to, to cartridges someday because they will hold more ink. And now, this little thing that I got into my collection last month. This is, this is getting bent, but don't worry. It is, it is can be removed. And which pen is this? I've showed this, you this before in the unboxing and also in the pens from October 2020. And this is an Enso pen. It uncaps with clicking in this rubber o-ring it has there and then it posts the same way. Sometimes not that easy, it's quite tight. I think the, the o-ring sometimes gets twisted and makes it a little harder. That's my critique about this pen. Otherwise it's quite interesting, faceted, black nib, bock number five nib limited edition also made of copper i like copper pens i guess you understood that already this is an enso xs minimalist uh, copper limited edition i think this this was limited to 200 pens it has a fine nib also and it has the graph von faber Castell, this is steel nib, of course, and it is a cartridge pen. Grafon Faber Castell uh, Moss Green. It is an interesting green because it's a dark one, but not as interesting because it is more on the cold side. I prefer these kind of greens like the 
the Mont Blanc, Daniel Defoe. And I, one thing that I like in this pen, it's sometimes it's a little harder to post. Maybe this pen has not seen enough use to to be easier to post, but I love the noise it makes when you unpost it. It looks like a champagne bottle being opened, so I think it's quite fun. So, beautiful, interesting pen, and if you are OCD enough, you'll spend lots of time aligning the facets. It's, they, they are easy to align because this is not a, a twist, uh, uh, a screw-in cap, you just need to you, you just fit in place and then you can rotate it to align them and it is secure enough to stay like this. This is a nice, interesting, small pocket pen, the same size of the Caveco Lilliput. By the way, the Caveco Supra and the Sean Design, also almost the same size, so quite equivalent these pens. And now we're reaching the end, only two pens to go. And we go from the... We went from Germany to Japan to the United States and we go to China and we'll meet this Parker Dufold lookalike in a very bright, beautiful yellow color and this is the Ving Sung 670. It's running out of ink, so I hope it will end the video. I think it, it, it will go through this writing sample. Uh, yellow with a fine nib, as usual, and you can see the variations of fine nibs. And it has the Lamy Bronze. I don't know why this color is called bronze. And it's like this, it's not a very wet nib, and these smear tests are awful because the, all the colors are getting mixed. I'm not sure if I like that black part there. If I had to compare these two copies of a Parker Dufold, I would prefer much more the Jinhao Centennial. However, this one is yellow and I love yellow. By the way, did you notice that this pen is now available in yellow and the Parker Centennial du Fold is in yellow is a pen that it's really sought after, it's very rare. So I'm really happy because I already ordered from China and it's quite inexpensive. This Jinhao Centennial du Fold, the Jinhao Centennial in yellow, it's quite nice. And no, I've showed this pen before, sorry. <laughs> I was distracted. And so we go to the last pen. We go from the chi from China to Germany. And this is a pen from a brand that no longer exists, but it was a nice pen. I bought it new some years ago in a stationery shop, very, very small, here in Lisbon. It doesn't exist anymore as almost all stationery stores. And this pen is demonstrator reform made in Germany with a medium nib. You can post it if you find it more comfortable. It's not a very big pen but it's big enough. So this is the reform. It has an interesting name. Skywalker and it has a medium nib. This pen writes wonderfully. Very stiff nib, but very good. Smooth, perfect ink flow, so nothing to criticize. And it has the Caveco Royal Blue. Beautiful medium nib with the right amount of feedback. Smooth, it is a a demonstrator, which means it is transparent, but I think that this acrylic has yellow has yellowed a little bit, so but I understand that this pen maybe it's from the 90s or 80s and it's just nice to have a reform pen. 
this brand has quite an history, it's not a small brand at all, but the, no longer exists, unfortunately, but I will talk more about it when I make the, when I'll make the review of this band. And about the wetness, it's great, not too wet, but writes perfectly well, and it is a click in place cap with a steel nib, not a very big nib, but I think it's all in good proportion into this pen. So these are the 25 pens with ink that I will start this month. However, I guess during November there will be some things coming. Uh, and so I'm trying not to increase the number of pens that I have inked some of those when they are out of ink and if I have the videos with them made maybe I will not re-ink them some will be re-inked and this is it I think November will bring some other pens and I have to manage the, the number of pens that I have inked at one time so you can see here again I went for lots of blacks, browns and greens. Sometimes we have violet, orange or red or blue, but that's not really the color that I use the most. I always go for dark, dull colors. So, this is all I had to show you in this video. I hope you like this kind of long videos, at least the, the views that I get show that and so I enjoy making them. Uh, if you have suggestions, please let me know on the comment section below. Uh, check the links for stores and for my reviews. And I think we'll meet again soon. You can see my smear test finger. And I enjoy doing this for you. So, this is it. I'll see you next video. Bye.